Hey, what's up guys? This is Dr. Vivek Palipuram bringing you the next lecturette in ECP 127, Random Signals. In this lecturette, I'm going to solve some problems pertaining to joint probability mass functions. And I'm going to show you how you can apply the principles of joint PMF to solve different probabilities. So here in this problem, you have two, unbi two biased coins, A and B. You don't know which is which, so you flip them both one by one, choosing the first coin at random. So you have already seen such a problem before from our classes before. For this problem, what we need to do is we need to define x as a random variable that denotes the total number of tails for the entire experiment, and y is the total number of heads in the last flip. And we need to devise the joint PMF and find the marginal PMFs of X and Y. So let's work on, on this problem and draw the tree diagrams for, for this. So everything is going to start at the root here. So I do not have a preference for a coin, so I will choose coin A and B with probabilities one half each. Let's say that I chose coin A. So when I flip it, I get heads or tails with probability 104 and 304. Then I need to flip the coin B. So I'll get HB or TB. Similarly, let's say that I selected coin B first, I'll flip it. I'll get heads with probability 304 and tails with probability 1 over 4. And then I need to flip the coin A. So that's my tree diagram. So if you recall the concepts of tree diagram, the depth of your tree diagram is equal to the number of sub experiments that you're performing. So here we are performing three sub experiments. One is to select a coin, then to flip the coin and then just flip the another coin. So we have three sub experiments. To, so the depth of this tree is one, two, and three. And three, okay. So these are the outcomes. The leaves of your tree diagram are the outcomes of the entire experiment. So this is A, H, A, H, B, and it's always a good idea to trace the path from the root all the way to these leaves to find their respective probabilities. So this has probability three or 32. This one is A, H, A, T, B. So this has the probability one over 32. This is A, T, A, H, B. This has the probability nine over 32. Then the next leaf is A, T, A, T, B. It has the probability 3 over 32. And similarly, I'm going to find the probabilities of all the other leaves. This is B, H, B, T, A, 9 over 32. This one is B, B, T, B, H, A, probabilities 1 over 32. And the last one is B, T, B, T, A with probability 3 over 32. Okay, now my random variable X is defined as the number of tails in the entire experiment and Y is defined as the number of heads on the last flip. So I need to assign those numbers to these outcomes in the sample space. So this guy is going to get 0, 0,1 if x and y is my x comma y is my representation because I have zero tails and exactly one heads on the last flip. Here I have one tails and zero heads. Here I have one tails and one heads. Here I have two tails and zero heads. Here I have zero tails and one heads in the last flip. Here I have one tail and zero heads. Here I have one tail and one heads on the last flip. And here I have two tails and zero heads on the last flip. So those are the numbers assigned to the outcomes in the sample space. Now the probability mass function, the joint PMF is going to give you the probability that random variable X takes on a specific value small x and Y takes on a specific value small y. So here you can see here that X takes on values 0, 1 and 2 because you can get either uh, zero tails at all um, or you can get one tails in the entire experiment or you can get two tails. Whereas y takes on a value 0 or 1 because you have you can have either zero, zero heads or no heads at all on the last flip. So let me, using brevity, let me draw 
the PMF, the joint PMF in this manner, in, an, in the form of a nice table. So the horizontal column here, or the horizontal row here will determine the value of x. So this means x is 0, 1, and 2. Here I have y, so 0 and 1. So this one is like 0, 0. So I'll put the probability of 0, 0 right here. Here I'll put the probability of 1, 0. Here I'll put the probability of 2, 0, and so on and so forth. So let me fill this one, probability of 0, 0. When I conduct this experiment, there's absolutely no way in which I can get a 0, 0 because 0, 0 is simply not listed in any of these layers. So that probability is 0. Next, I need to find the probability of 1, 0. So to find the probability of 1, 0, I'll look into the leaves that have 1, 0 in them. All right, I'll look into the leaves that have values 1, 0 in them. So let me find that out. So those leaves are 1, 0 uh, is right here and 1, 0 is right here. So I'll add the probabilities of those leaves. So that gives me 10 over 32. So this probability is 10 over 32. Now, what about 2, 0? Let me find out the leaves that have 2, 0 in them. So it seems like I have this leaf that has 2, 0 and this leaf that has 2, 0. So those are, when I add their probabilities, I get 6 over 32. For x is equal to 0 and y equal to 1, let's search for 0, 1. So I have this one right here, 0, 1. And let's say the first one here, 0, 1. So I add the probabilities. Again, I get 6 over 32. Now let's check for 1, 1. So I have 1, 1 here. I have another 1, 1 here. So that gives me 10 in 32. And what about two tails and one heads? That cannot happen. 2 comma 1 cannot happen. So that probability is 0. So that gives you the probability mass function. Now, remember guys, the probability mass function does not have to be a beautiful looking formula like your binomial random variable or any of the named distribution. As long as you find a way to cite the probabilities of all the outcomes in the sample space, you are good to go. If you cite all the probabilities of the outcomes in the sample space, you essentially have given me the probability mass function. So that's the joint PMF. Now let's obtain the marginal PMF of X and Y. So marginal PMF of X is obtained by adding the joint PMF for all the values of Y for a given X. So for all Y. So for example, in this case, my marginal PMF of X will be defined for, or it will be non-zero for X is equal to zero, X is equal to one and X is equal to two. To find the marginal PMF of X, at x is equal to zero, I need to add all the values in this column because I need to add the joint PMF for all the values of y for a given x. So I add these values, so I get six over 32. Similarly, I add the values in this column and I get the probability that x is equal to one as 20 over 32. Then the probability of this column will be uh, six over 32. And it's a, it's a valid probability mass function because if you were to add all of these values together, you will indeed get a value equal to one. Now, let me obtain the marginal PMF of Y. So marginal PMF of Y will be obtained in the similar manner. I need to add the prob joint probability mass function for all the values of X, for all the values of X for a given Y. So I'll, add the values in a given row. So the PMF of Y is going to be valid for only, or it's going to be non-zero only for two values of Y, zero and one. So probability that Y is equal to zero is 16 over 32, and probability of Y equal to one is also 16 over 32, meaning one half each. And this makes sense here, doesn't it? Because Y is the number of heads on the last flip. So if you were to flip a coin the last time, it's, you're asking what's the probability that you get one hedge. The champ probability is 50-50, obviously. So that's an example of how we solve problems with probability mass function. Now, you may not strictly expect a problem on joint PMF in your final exam, but you may expect such a problem in one of your homeworks, which will be posted on Monday. All right, so for Wednesdays, 
in class participation, this is the problem that you need to solve. What you need to do is you need to give me the value of constant c. You need to find the probability that y is less than x. Find the probability that y is equal to x. And the last one, for what is the probability that x takes on any value small x? So essentially, you need to give me the PMF of x. So please solve this problem by Wednesday 2 p.m. this coming Wednesday, which is the 1st of April. All right, guys, this is the end of this lecture at Dr. Vivek Palipuram is signing out.